some workplace, and then you're a good UN citizen because you're a producer and a consumer. It means you're a taxpayer as well. And that's really what your purpose is, apparently, on the planet, according to those who set up the United Nations, and those were the Royal Institute of International Affairs and all the big bankers, as a front group for taking over the planet. And my goodness, they're actually doing it. And, of course, they wanted a world that was run by experts, rather than have people live the way they wanted to live, think what they wanted to think. No, they'd teach them and train them. They called it adult education, uh, continuous adult education through, through the media. You're upgraded all the time in the latest political correctness. And the children at school are being utterly uh, brainwashed into sustainability. Someone sent me uh, one of the latest cartoons, to do with sustainability, and it was about robots, of course. Robots that made little clicking sounds and, and whistling sounds like a, some sort of teddy bear, I don't know. But, of course, it's designed for them to uh, really identify with. And the robots were the slaves of these fat people who couldn't get off the cars that they kind of lay upon. Uh, it, was, it was incredibly so obvious what it was meant to be. But that's what the children are fed today, and they grow up to be your little green police, and they're going to be utterly ruthless. You won't be able to talk to them at all. There's no, there's no compromise with them or looking for fairness. These characters are going to be vicious, believe you me, uh, because they're, they're really being conditioned beyond even what the, uh, the Chinese conditioned their own people to be. A one-way street only, one-way thinking, that's it. And if you're having more than your fair share, as they'll say, of proportions, of portions of anything, uh, you're going to suffer for it. This is the training of, of the society for the new system. They got on the go for a long time. It's just that people, people are busy working or having fun. They're told to have lots of fun these days and leave all the big problems to the big boys at the top that are paid to do it. And when you're doing that, they really are up to so much mischief, you can't keep up with it. I was thinking last night, you know, you could go on uh, for your life and another ten lives to come uh, just gathering data, and it's going to be pretty well of no use to you. See, it's not, a, it's not a lack of data that's a problem. It's a lack of concerned people. That's the problem. And I've always said that those who resist this change, you see, really don't fit in to the elite who are bringing it on and who are ordering it all and paying for it all, all the indoctrination and all their NGOs. They don't fit in to the crowd either. The crowd will always go the way they're steered to go by those that own them, and I mean own them. So you don't belong to either group, you see, and there's nothing set up in the system for you and your own kind. That's the problem. The reason they chose democracy is because the public will be steered to vote the way they're told to vote. That's why they call it democracy, really. It's the easiest way to get them all on board with something because they go for the politician who's put out there to, to promise them more than the other politician. It's all a show for the public. They know who they're putting in before you even hear the names of presidents and prime ministers and they know their part in the agenda. They might not know much more than that because everybody is told just enough for their own particular function and level. That's the real world. But, you know, you can't go anywhere across the world today without this sustainability, sustainability just hitting you in the face from a thousand directions. Remember, as I say, a good UN citizen is a good producer and consumer. That means if you're only someone who's consuming, you're ill, you're disabled, or you're elderly, you're a bad citizen, obviously. You're a burden on society. So you're back to eugenics again. And the big eugenics movements that came out uh, openly with Darwin, it was on the go before Darwin, actually, but uh, they came out openly with Darwin. And they used all his material that his father and grandfather had all wrote, written before him to justify why they'd have to get rid of the undesirable types in society. And they listed later on the cost of keeping criminals in prison, that type of thing. And all you have to do is to look around and realize the people who are advocating this eugenic system and really the eradication of the unfit, 
they all got to the top through slaughtering people. Well, how do you think the Rockefellers got to the top? By burning other guys' wells off and so on. They had gangs on the go. They're the biggest crooks of all. But, of course, they don't mention that part of it. Um, they get to the top and suddenly their offspring are very, very acceptable to society, very prominent people, because they're stinking rich from all the, the loot that they gathered by killing off and getting rid of all their competition. So the world is run by criminals, really, uh, dressed in suits and ties. I prefer the old type. They used to give you guys like Hitler or Stalin or Mussolini uh, or Castro even with a uniform on. So you, you knew you were under an authoritarian system. This way they do it in business suits, you see. And you're getting the same thing with, uh, via a business suit, uh, telling the same things. Now, in the Club of Rome and others, they have said that Democracy was too cumbersome. They couldn't get their agenda forward fast enough because of too many different parties all fighting each other, wanting different things. So they were creating a system of post-democratic governance. Governance is a term that's used everywhere. It's used through industries, through, through commerce, through the NGOs and all the writings. Governance, you see this overlap of, of uh, uh, big money, big corporations, and your governmental system, governance, international experts, again, involved in it, on board with it. But they also said, too, it would have to be an authoritarian society. And you're now under authoritarianism. And you'll be taught more and more of this authoritarianism as time goes on, as they push more and more laws that are going to really tick you off. And you'll pay extra fees and fines for different things that are coming down the pike. But you'll get used to it pretty well. Because as they know, as Darwin said, the man is the most adaptable species on the planet. And those who just want a good time and to be left alone uh, really won't notice it very much. They'll just pay up their extra fees and so on. And obey the, the, the latest laws. And don't say the, the, the certain words and don't call people certain names and stuff like that. Whoever it happens to be, they'll all be on board with the, with the political correctness, you see, which stifles all kind of speech completely. You know, when the Soviets came in under the Bolsheviks, and really the Bolshevik revolution was a coup. It wasn't really a revolution. It was a coup in the middle of the night when a gang of guys took over uh, the socialist uh, parties overnight with machine guns and a well-trained, small, very small army. But the first laws they passed were the hate laws, believe it or not, hate laws, because they didn't want people asking questions about why one particular people seemed to be running everything in this wonderful new uh, Soviet type of democracy that they'd hoped to bring in. And people caught on very quickly what, the, what would happen if they did. And when that happens, you really start to police yourself. And that's part of it, too. You'll see this all through the UN writings and other writings from the big NGOs and the foundations, how they're teaching the public, training the public to self-police, as they call it. Not only yourself, but your neighbors, and even people you talk to next door or, or, or at school or wherever, they'll also police you as, them, as well as themselves to make sure you're, there's, there's nothing wrong with you. Because so everybody's supposed to adapt to the new political correctness at the same time, you see. This is the world they're bringing in. Even in Britain, uh, they brought in, as I say, the, I mentioned this yesterday, the new communitarian uh, system is, is going in fast, uh, where little communities will then have the little local representatives, but they'll be under expert guidance, you see, because the leaders will be supplied to them. Most folk in an area have no clue about how things work at all, financial or otherwise, and so they've already been trained the leaders are already placed, implanted, embedded in the different areas to take over as the leaders. They're the ones who your locals will elect. And they'll go off uh, to, to the federal government or to the local bank and ask for this and that and the other on your behalf. And you're left with the tab as well as the, the national tab as well to pay off. To get you all used to it. To make you think that you're all in it together. You're, you're, you're participating in your own future. But they call you stakeholders. And I went through that too. A stakeholder it has, is not a shareholder. Uh, the Palestinians, for instance, are stakeholders. They have an interest 
or, and being there and trying to stay there and live there. The people who live in the Amazon forests are also stakeholders. They haven't gone forward. They don't know how or even heard of the United Nations uh, to go forward and say, we want to be recognized as a nation with our own rights and so on. So, so they really, they're, they're stakeholders, but they're not shareholders. And that's why they get, they'll get raped and pillaged like every other country that doesn't go off to the UN and say, please make us a state. And if the UN doesn't recognize you, well, that's it, you're tough luck. It's your fair game for anybody who wants to come in and take your land, which is always big commerce. And that's the real world. And there are thousands and thousands of these non-governmental organizations working all the time, round the clock, in shifts, full-time salaries, big wages, to do us all in. And we don't elect any of them. Hi folks, I'm Alan Watt and we're cutting through the matrix. Just talking about the big system under which we live and most people don't even know what their, their own governments are up to and that's supposed to be that way because governments have never ever been in the business of being honest to the people about anything. Uh, it's like an art of chronology. It's been that way our whole life. It's been that for a hundred years at least, in fact, in all countries. And... The Soviet system were a bit, they did it easier because they didn't have to pretend to try and give the people reasons for things. They just told them what to do. Well, that's a system we're going into now as well. They want us to jump, jump into the new system. Whenever they say jump, we jump, or you get massive fines, you get punishment. You know, very, very, very basic animalistic type of training, very Pavlovian, and that's what's coming down the pike. Now in Britain, of course, they're, which is a flagship for the world, where this all, all this started, um, they're bringing a civilian force along with the regular police to get them used, to, especially young ones, to get them used to policing their own communities as civilians. Now, do you really want to live in that kind of society? And by the way, you know, where is it written? Mind you, there's no real constitution in Britain for all that they keep talking there's a constitution. It's a verbal, it's an oral thing, which means it's completely elastic. But... Uh, Where's it written in anybody's constitution uh, that the government can just get up and do this kind of thing with civilian policing? In other words, spies everywhere. Once you create that kind of society, you'll be scared to talk to anybody, even in casual conversation. And that's what it's meant to do. It's meant to make you start living inside your head uh, in Orwellian fashion. And Orwell put it very well in 1984, the book that was written about this phase of the system before we go completely into the Huxleyan phase of Brave New World. Actually, both are on the go at the same time, but we have to get trained, really trained quickly through fear uh, by the Orwellian type phase. And um, in Orwell's uh, 84, everyone had to guard their thoughts, even their expressions on their face, because there were cameras just like today all over the place watching you. And I've read articles here before where they're putting in, they put in the programs already to try and detect emotion so that they can do pre-arrest. Is this person getting angry here? Is their jaw tense? Is that muscle twitching? Or whatever it happens to be. This stuff is already in use. For world safety and peace, you understand. That's the way they push it. So we're all just a castle in the big scheme of things. Some are better than others. How on earth can people fall for it when they think this, this, that the left is for the working people? When they see who they put in there, the multi-millionaires and all the rest. What have they, what have they got in common with you? Nothing. And apart from that, their agenda is the same agenda. There's only one agenda between right and left, and it's been like that my whole lifetime, building up to the present, to this communitarian phase and sustainability as they train us to, that we're really awful, nasty beasts that are costing too much to keep us alive, according to what we put out uh, in production. Therefore, you know, we've got to just be sterilized and hopefully die off. And you will see generations coming up right now who will not have children at all. And immigration is already planned to be the, the way, it already is the way of keeping up the population in most Western countries. That, the IMF will tell you that too. There's report after report coming out and that that's what they intend to do because we're all economic units and apparently, and government's not there to serve us in our business. We are there to serve it. We're economic units and that's all they care about. Are you pr producing enough and consuming enough?
spending enough money. 